Hi everyone, um, I'm back. So uh, today I'll just give you a few important aspects regarding the quality control uh, measures in any and every laboratory. So uh, as our day you know ends, we retire in the day, we go to sleep. Okay. Uh, similar is the lab. The work in the day is over, and you know we come and visit the lab the next day. But it is important to see how well your lab has slept and how well it is getting up. By that, what I mean is the equipments in the lab. Now, equipments are the most important and critical, uh, say, ingredients in giving you the success that you are after. Okay, so we need to keep checking these day in day out. Uh, because any fluctuation in their behavior is going to fluctuate your results and basically not rather fluctuate is going to you know just take your results on a downside and it's going to take some amount of efforts then to get it back to where you were and then further you know progress to the next level so what are these instruments that i'm talking about um, so these are all the machines like you know the laminar airflows the uh, incubators now incubators could be of two types um, the uh, you know the minks or the bench stop incubators or the big box incubators uh, or the big brothers that we uh, refer to sometimes uh, then the exceeding the uh, heating blocks so uh, what do you need for um, you know taking care of these uh, instruments or these babies two most important uh, uh, instruments that you need to take care of the bigger instruments now these are the temperature probe and the co2 analyzer Okay, these two instruments are pretty much the cornerstone of every laboratory, and I'm sure that all your laboratories must be having these two uh, say instruments. If not, please buy them immediately because you don't know what is going wrong in your lab, and that's particularly one reason why you're probably stuck at a particular um, uh, result or success rate, or probably thinking why am I not improving, or you know why my results are deteriorating. So it's important you have these two instruments. Now, what do you check out of these? Now, if you see behind me is the heating block. Now, heating block is an essential ingredient in your day-to-day -day practice. What does it do? It basically is a intermediate uh, holder of your, uh, you know, fluid that you check or you screen your eggs into. Okay. So once the pickup is getting done, uh, the nurse will collect the fluid and keep it in test tubes in this particular heating rack. So it is important that the blood which is there inside these tubes along with the fluid has to be at 37 degrees. Why? Otherwise it will just clot and you are going to lose out on the uh, important eggs. One of the most important of the primary say instruments which you need to uh, analyze or see whether it is at par with the 37 degrees uh, temperature is the heating block. Now what? does this heating block do it's an intermediate holder okay uh, intermediate holder what i mean is during the pickups uh, during the pickups the follicular fluid is going to be collected in test tubes and these test tubes are going to be held inside these heating blocks till the embryologist finish screening the current test tube containing the uh, follicular fluid that he or she has but until then the pickup can't stop so the follicular fluid contained test tubes are going to keep pouring in and being uh, are going to be held into this these heating blocks so that's why it's important that the heating block is at 37 degrees if not the blood is going to get clot and you're not going to have eggs that you're desiring uh, which you're desiring rather or which you might have thought you have stimulated that is one aspect and it also gives you a important uh, understanding of what is the temperature which is displayed on the machine vis-a-vis -vis what you get on the temperature probe so that also tells you which is at fault is the temperature probe at fault or it's the instrument so that's why it's important that you have a daily check of these uh, aspects because it's important that all of them are uh, you know at 37 degrees plus or minus 0.5 degrees uh, moving on then you have the laminar airflow or the instrument on which you uh, inside which you do the pickups now this has nothing else but just a heated um, temperature surface which has to be checked from a quality control perspective 
for the reading so the heated surface is at 37 degrees and it's not uh, though important to check every day but once in three days it is a good practice to keep the temperature probe on this and check it the reason i say once in three days is because you know keeping the probe or sticking it to the particular surface can be a little bit tricky and uh, you know you might not always uh, be the best uh, quality control checker for uh, uh, laminar airflow. So do it once in three days and you get a good hang of it. Uh, then once you've done this, uh, similar to the laminar airflow is the ICSI rig. Now ICSI rig again has a very small heated surface on which you keep the dish. Again this surface is similar to the laminar air uh, flow surface which doesn't have any um, you know provision for us to dip into a particular liquid or you know uh, keep it inside uh, you know a particular instrument but it has to be on a flat surface so again once in three days checking of that is uh, recommended uh, because uh, you will you should remember that when you are doing ICSI the oocytes are going to be exposed for at least 10 minutes depending upon how many number of oocytes are taking for injection and 10 minutes is a huge time for any alteration to happen okay and you know kill the oocytes then the next is benchtop incubators. Now benchtop incubators have two aspects. Uh, they run either on tri gas or CO2 as well. Uh, sorry, my bad. Uh, incubators are of two types. They either run on tri gas or CO2. Now the benchtop that we are using, they run on tri gases. Uh, tri gas means a component of oxygen, CO2 and nitrogen. So we need to uh, check the CO2 content of it. Okay, so uh, every tri gas uh, cylinder that you get has has to be certified with the amount of proportion of the mix of these tri gases. Okay, once you have the certified gases, then you're sure that the flow of tri gases which you're going to get is going to be accurate. So once that is there, then you use a CO2 uh, say probe to check inside to see whether it's six percent because. If your tri gas cylinder does not have a 6% CO2, then obviously here you are not going to get a 6% say CO2 output, right? So uh, we need to check for that along with the temperature. So when you come to you know testing QAQC parameters inside the incubator, you have to insert two probes inside the uh, inside any of these chambers. Now you can keep alternating these chambers every day. It's not necessary to take. Uh, you know the QAQC you know reading for both the uh, chambers. You, so, for example, if today is a Monday, you check Monday on the left side. Tuesday, you check on the right side. Okay. Similarly, the other aspect that you need to check uh, into uh, an incubator is not just the temperature and CO2, but water content. Because uh, uh, once if the water is you know out, then no matter if your temperature and CO2 is you know at the normal readings of 37 degrees or plus or minus 0.54 degrees uh, out of water is going to basically kill your embryos or you know stop the development of your embryos uh, for example if you're looking for a day 3 to day 5 move you might be wondering why the day 3 embryos are not progressing to blastosis so that could have a very key uh, uh, you know finding or that could be a critical factor in analyzing that particular switch why it might not happen uh, if you leave aside the uh, you know uh, the clinical parameters or the individual egg and the sperm parameters uh, similarly uh, the big box which i talk about is the uh, the uh, um, you know box incubators now these are the working incubators that we call which we keep reopening every day probably uh, you know 10 20 times uh, in a day so uh, even in those incubators you have uh, water content and co2 so it's important to check CO2 temperature water in these big box incubators as well. Uh, once you have finished this, it's important to document it and you know at the end of the month analyze if there has been any spike or a dip in the uh, QAQC parameters. But these are pretty much uh, the most important parameters inside uh, the lab which are at a higher degree or at a CO2. Now something cold that you need to also check inside a, um, you know, IVF laboratory which is not at 37 degrees is your refrigerator in which you store the uh, you know important media and all the other say uh, consumables like oil uh, which are going to be used for preparation of your cycles. Now it's important that this frame temperature also ranges between 4 to 6 degrees.